This is my Plasma TV recorded at 4K 60 FPS. <laughs> Just amazing. I've been wanting to record my Plasma TV at 60 FPS for so long. This is fantastic. Did you know that there was a 4K Plasma TV? 600 the price, 600 thousand pounds okay without counting the crane <laughs> that was necessary for the installation just insane over 100 inches a 4k plasma tv so what is amazing about the plasma tvs is not only the picture quality is the motion clarity when you move the camera at only 60 fps the plasma looks like 240 frames per second so if i move the camera at this speed it looks like if it was 240 fps that is fantastic for gaming and this one is only 1080p so you might think man 1080p that's too low of a resolution what about pixel density how big is that plasma tv this one is 42 inches this Plasma TV is only 42 inches. And at 1080p, I can tell you that pixel density is not a problem. I am using here, let me show you the resolution I'm playing the game here. This is an NVIDIA Deep Learning Super Resolution, 2880 by 1620, okay? So it is upscaling the resolution. This looks very, very, very good. It looks like a Pixar movie, <laughs> okay? So pixel density, not a problem because the Plasma TV also glows. It's glowing. So instead of you seeing the anti-aliasing, that, that ugly staircase effect that you see uh, with the aliasing, the Plasma TV technology is hiding that aliasing because the pixels, they glow. So they blend together on a more rounder way. So instead of the pixels looking like uh, squares, <laughs> they look more rounded. It is magic. <laughs> this looks so good. This looks like a Pixar movie. Okay, it's just fantastic. So if you think about the value, <laughs> so people are giving away this, this place. I paid $25 for this plasma TV. The value is just off the chart. That's the reason why I opened this channel because I was blown away with the quality of this Panasonic from 2011. This was not even a top of the line plasma TV. This was a mediocre plasma TV. It was $1,000 back in the day. The best uh, plasma TVs, they costed like three over $3,000 just insane so i was blown away with this plasma tv it is old but it's still bright i have no problem with the brightness and i love the contrast and the colors of the plasma it's just the, the colors are beautiful the black level is very good it is not oled not even close okay at least not this one if you can get a pioneer kuro ninth generation i heard that those with those you can reset the black level and get almost factory black levels again because the plasma tvs they lose uh, the black level they it gets degraded over time and rather fast uh you know it, it gets degraded so basically out of the box, the black level is amazing and you use it just a little bit and the black level is just, it just gets uh, raised a little bit. But still, still, it looks fantastic, man. I love it. The colors are great. The contrast is great. All you need is 60 FPS to play your games, <laughs> okay? It looks amazing. I move the camera. This looks good in motion. It looks like 240 FPS. That's just fantastic. So you get a plasma TV and you open the UFO test and you change the speed to 240 pixels per second. And the UFO test is perfectly clear. 
perfectly clear. You can see the eyes, the pupils of the alien. And what that means is that the motion clarity is up to 240 frames per second. Now, it has other limitations uh, beyond persistence, okay? And when you go faster than 240 pixels per second, the motion clarity breaks because other factors that are not persistence. Okay, gray to gray and other factors that I don't understand. But it's still very good, man. Still very good. In comparison with sample and hold displays, for example, all the sample and hold displays we have today at 60 FPS, they are 16 times worse than a CRT. So you remember those CRT uh, monitors? They are at 60 FPS. They are 16 times better than all the sample and hold displays we have today, including the OLED. Okay. <laughs> so now the, the plasma TV is only four times worse than the OLED, than the CRT. So basically, the CRT looks like a thousand FPS, <laughs> which is insane. The CRT at 60 FPS looks like 1,000 FPS. Okay. That's that's how much we lost <laughs> with the CRTs, without the CRTs. So then, you know, a sample and hold display at 60 FPS looks like 60 FPS. <laughs> the plasma looks up to 240. So you see the difference, basically. It was a downgrade in comparison with the CRT in terms of uh, motion clarity, but you get a bigger screen size and size matters, okay? So CRTs are amazing, but the screen size is uh, small. Okay, so I think the Plasma technology was a good idea. Let me show you the settings I am using here, just in case that you get, um, you know, you get excited, you get your Panasonic Plasma TV, and you want to see what settings I'm using here. Uh, I am using these settings. Uh, this is not me just going up and down. I made a video explaining why these settings. So using uh, test patterns, you know, white clipping, I adjusted the contrast, then I adjusted the colors comparing it with the LG C1 on SDR, because the LG C1 on SDR clamps the color gamut to Rec 709 when you use color gamut on auto, okay? And that is correct. That looks, it is more accurate. So the Plasma TV by default is on 50, and that looks overly saturated, okay? Because the Plasma has, the color space goes beyond Rec. 709 a little bit. So this looks very good. It looks like, like a candy. I was loving it. <laughs> but then I realized that, okay, that's overly saturated, and I no longer uh, like it that much. So 42, that's, that's 41, 42, that's what the LG C1 is doing on SDR. So I suppose that is more accurate and I do like it. And then they call the temperature on normal, but I actually, I like sometimes, especially when I play uh, before going to sleep, I love this warm tone. It is, uh, I love it. <laughs> I like it a lot, but it's not accurate. Normal should be uh, more correct, uh, I believe. And then remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just enthusiast and I try to, you know, my best to get the best picture. I'm not an expert. So then what I do is I am using on the NVIDIA control panel, I am using limited range. So RGB limited, okay, 12 bits, <laughs> which you know, it doesn't make any difference because uh, SDR is eight bits, but you know, I can do it. So I just have that in 12 bits and then this black level on dark, that means limited on the TV. So that's the limited range on the TV. And the reason why I use this setting, so the reason why I have for the Plasma TV, the on the NVIDIA control panel, I have limited and I have that dark on the TV is because that is the best way. That is the only way that allows me to push the contrast to 91 so it allows me so having limited on the gpu allows me 
to increase this contrast to 91 and not clip the whites. So the contrast, if you increase the contrast, that is clipping the whites. That's what is happening. So if I have full range on the GPU, I cannot increase the contrast to 91 because it is going to clip the white. So basically when I look at this at the clouds, uh, they are like white. I don't see the clouds very well uh, you know with all the details. I am losing details. It's too too white, too bright. Uh, so basically I would need to have the contrast on 50. And if I increase it past 50 then it's it's bad. That's why limited on on GPU, limited on the on TV allows me to have that contrast on 91 and get perfect. You get the highest brightness possible. This plasma is actually very bright. Very bright for plasma standards, okay? I am not talking about I mean this is this plasma is up to 100 nits full screen white, which is very very good for plasmas. Very very good. And you see that on the recording it goes in and out of this yellow tint. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's just the camera doesn't like the plasma technology, the dithering that is going on here with the plasma. But you can see how good it looks, man. At times, this is just insane. This is just beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that blue, man. I'm looking at the recording, and I can say the screen... This I'm recording this with the Pixel 7 Pro 4K 60. I can say that it looks acceptably close to what I have in front of me. I'm looking at the screen on the recording and I'm looking at the plasma and it looks very close, very close. I can say on the recording the blue is overly saturated. It's overly saturated. It, it is not, I don't have, it doesn't look that blue on in front of me. But yeah, it's okay. It is not complete. It is not something completely different. It is okay. So yeah, man. I would strongly suggest you to get a plasma TV, even if if it's just to okay. Let's see. Let's see if it's true. Let's see what this guy is talking about. Yeah, just for that, <laughs> get a plasma TV. It's not gonna cost you a lot of money, and if you don't like it, you can always just give it away or something. If you need a display, maybe you just bought, let's say you spent all the money on your gaming PC, okay? And then you you want to get an OLED, but you know, you need to save a little bit more. Just to have one or two months something to display, get a plasma TV, man. I, you are not going to regret. That's exactly what I did. And <laughs> I was so happy with the plasma TV. Actually, I was so happy with the plasma that the LG C1 was a frustration at the beginning. And the reason was these colors, man. <laughs> these colors are just wild. They are incorrect and they are overly saturated. But this default color setting here at 50 is a candy. <laughs> it's a candy and it doesn't look incorrect for somebody who doesn't know anything about color accuracy. That is me. <laughs> It was looking fantastic to me. Okay, so I'm sure most people are going to enjoy that color saturation. They are going to love it. <laughs> okay, and when we see a fire, if you see a fire on the game, it looks insane. The fire looks incandescent on the plasma TV. It's, be it's beautiful. It's something just beautiful. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions. If you ask me, hey, what's the best plasma TV I can get? As far as I know, Pioneer Kuros, ninth generation. If you can get one of those in good shape, you probably have the best, <laughs> the best plasma TVs because the Pioneer Kuros, uh, with them, you can reset the black level. So the plasma TVs, the, the black level after you use them a little bit, the black level is, it loses the floor, basically. The black level, it's not that it gets raised, uh, but kind of, yeah, it does get, it gets raised a little bit. It doesn't affect the, the near black visibility, but it does 
uh, gets raised a little bit. So with the Pioneer Kuros from ninth generation, I've seen some videos uh, that you can reset the black level. So you can get that factory quality again. So you can do it as many times as you want. Uh, but, you know, Panasonic plasmas are very good. And there are some people that uh, they use a screwdriver on the back of the TV and they uh, rotate. Uh, I forgot the name of that component. There's one component uh, on the back of the TV that they rotate to adjust the black level and make it better. Uh, so, you know, that's something a little bit higher, a little bit more complicated. Uh, but, you know, it's something you can search also. And if you break it, I mean, it was $50, maybe $50, uh, $100. So if you get one of the best, $200, I think is okay. $200 for a Pioneer Kuro. If it's in good shape, that's a great buy. Great buy. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions. And if you have any questions.